got a comment, why not just up the resolution? The higher the native resolution, the less the CPU works. Except that's not true. At least it's drawing a connection of two things that are not actually the same thing. So this seems to be a really common misunderstanding based on how many comments I got like that on my Battlefield 6's CPU Limited, here's what you do video. I had a lot of suggestions uh, in the comments saying, well, just raise the rendering resolution of the game because that makes the work on the CPU easier. As if that's gonna in increase performance. Cause again, the point of that video is what do you do to increase performance when you are CPU limited? Now this video is not about what do you do to increase performance when your CPU is limited. Watch the other video for that. What I'm talking about here is um, clearing up this misunderstanding because I think some people have heard that at higher resolutions, your CPU is not as important and draw the conclusion that if, your game, that if you turn up the rendering resolution of the game from like 1080p to 1440p or 4K, that somehow that makes the game run better on the CPU. And that is absolutely not what's happening and that's not what people mean by that. So let's make sure we clear this up. Also a little bit about uh, a, a something some people might not know about things like DLSS and FSR and how it affects CPU uh, performance. But anyway, let's start with clearing up the misconception. So right now, I am definitely CPU limited. Now, despite none of the cores indicating exactly 100% usage or anything like that, and the CPU itself is only reporting about 60% utilization, we're definitely CPU limited. Uh, you look at the GPU. The GPU is in this kind of 60 something percent uh, usage range. The GPU is waiting for the CPU. The CPU can get bottlenecked on an individual thread being near 100% or even things like the cache or the connection to system RAM. And there's all sorts of stuff, but the point is here, the GPU is waiting for the CPU. And we're getting around 190-ish uh, frames per second. It varies because I'm in a live multiplayer environment and apologies to my teammate. You've all probably had uh, somebody like me standing in your spot. Blame me, if, if you find somebody standing in spawn doing absolutely nothing to help the team, assume it's me doing a benchmark video, okay? Anyway, uh, we're gonna go ahead and change the graphics resolution. So we're in kind of the mid 190 frames per second-ish range. So. Uh, if I go up to 1440p, is performance gonna get better since we were CPU limited, but we're raising the resolution, which should make the workload of the CPU easier, right? Wait a minute. We're still getting the mid 190 FPS range. We're getting exactly the same performance. Again, things dip momentarily as explosions and things happen on the map in the live multiplayer environment. But effectively, we have exactly the same performance at both 1080p and at 1440p right now. Now notice that the GPU is now working harder, its usage percentage is higher, it's closer to 80%. Um, but the CPU is doing about the same thing. So to be clear, when you change the rendering resolution of a game, it has little to no impact on the work that the CPU is being assigned. The kinds of jobs that a CPU does is rarely uh, uh, majorly impacted by the rendering resolution of the game. The rendering resolution of the game is just how many little dots are being put together on the screen. That's the work that, that right? how many pixels are going up on your screen in each frame. That's work that the GPU does. The GPU is what is primarily affected by rendering resolution of the game. Now in certain games, some stuff can kind of scale up a bit with the resolution that's being calculated on the CPU, but if anything, that would actually make the work a little bit harder on the CPU as you increase the resolution, not lower. Um, now, it is true that if I now go to 4K resolution, we'll probably see the CPU working a little bit less hard, but that's just because we're gonna become GPU limited and the overall frame rate in the game is going to be lower. So again, let's get an idea of what performance is like right now. It looks like we're in the kind of the mid uh, 180 range uh, because it looks like there's more people in the, uh, in the game in this area right now compared to a couple minutes ago. But let's go up to 4K resolution. We're gonna notice that performance is just gonna be lower overall. So notice that now we're getting around mid 150 FPS range. Also notice that the GPU utilization is now up to around 94, 95%, indicating that we are now mostly GPU limited. So notice the CPU is working a little bit less hard now, but that doesn't mean that the game is performing better. 
Okay, so that, that's what I wanna say here. So the comment saying, why not just up the resolution, the higher the native resolution, the less the CPU works. That's not really the case. That's not really how this works. Increasing the resolution doesn't help your performance when you are CPU limited. The only thing that happens here is an indirect connection. The raising of the resolution makes the GPU work harder. And if the GPU has to work hard enough, it will compute frames slower than the CPU does and lower the overall frame rate of the game. And that, and then the CPU will just be waiting around for the GPU, and that is what's gonna reduce the burden on the CPU. But also, uh, you know, this whole idea that gaming at higher resolutions like 4K and stuff is gonna be primarily, uh, like you don't really have to worry about your CPU. I see so many comments where people say like, Man, if you have like a 4K display, you don't even need to think about your CPU. That is such a backwards way of looking at this. It's really old fashioned because the thing is, most people on a 4K display now aren't gaming at native 4K resolution. It's true that native 4K resolution is so demanding on the GPU that it's very likely that you will end up GPU limited. But oftentimes, if you're in a game that has like DLSS 4 or FSR 4 support, uh, rendering at performance mode upscaling is uh, honestly oftentimes looking very close to native resolution. Certain elements actually get reconstructed with more stability than a native TAA implementation. Uh, and so if I go to DLSS performance mode here, notice we're once again CPU limited, okay? So uh, when you're in DLSS performance mode, the game is actually rendering at 1080p internally. And then there's an additional frame time cost on the GPU tensor cores for the upscaling algorithm. So there's additional frame time uh, uh, for the upscale part, taking it from 1080p to 4K. So it does perform, uh, it is harder on the GPU than rendering at a native 1080p because of the upscale. But essentially you are reducing a lot of the GPU workload down to as if you were playing at a lower rendering resolution. So if you're playing online competitive games on a high, high resolution display, it's very likely that you will be using upscaling in order to uh, reduce the burden on the GPU and push frame rates as hard, high as you can. So you should really not think of um, your monitor resolution as having a, being the, the primary deciding factor on like how good of a CPU do you need. Really what's going on is the CPU is more about the frame rate. Your CPU can compute a certain frame rate. If your GPU is computing a lower frame rate than your CPU, then yeah, the burden on the CPU will be low and it's not, your, it's not the deciding factor, you're not CPU limited. But if you reduce the burden on the GPU by lowering graphics settings or lowering the resolution either directly or using something like DLSS, which is what a lot of people don't really think about. DLSS performance mode is 1080p rendering with a little bit of upscaling cost, okay? Uh, even on a 4K display. Um, that you are now, uh, like I've done here, uh, oftentimes can become CPU limited because it's really, again, about the frame rate. The frame rate the CPU can reach, not about the resolution. The resolution is impacting the workload on the GPU primarily and only very minorly on the CPU, if at all, depending on the game. Now, another thing I wanna bring up here since we're talking about using DLSS and upscaling when CPU limited, and I wanna go down to 1080p resolution to make this more clear, because then we're gonna be CPU limited regardless of whether we're using DLSS or not, is that actually, uh, you, if you're CPU limited uh, at native resolution, it actually makes your performance slightly worse to use upscaling like DLSS and FSR. Not majorly so to where I think this is a big deal, but it's worth noting here. Notice I'm getting around 185 to 190 FPS right now in this scene. Looks like we're about 190 right now. And this is using DLSS performance at 1080p and we are extremely CPU limited. Uh, went down to 180 there for a second. So it's a little hard in the live multiplayer environment to get exact like for like comparisons, but we'll switch back and forth a couple of times so you can see it. If I turn off DLSS, we're actually gonna get slightly better performance. Uh, again, we'll have to switch back and forth a couple of times to see it because of the live multiplayer kind of affecting the frame rates, but okay. So it looks like we're at about uh, um, 188 uh, frames per second right now, 186, 187. We're gonna go ahead and turn uh, DLSS back on. And we're gonna see that it's gonna settle in at a slightly lower frame rate. Looks like uh, lower 180s. Um, 
again, it's, uh, it's, it's really hard to show in a live multiplayer environment. Maybe not the best, uh, best way to show this. Uh, but again, if I turn DLSS off, we're gonna go to slightly higher frame rates once it settles in, generally. Okay, looks like whatever's going on in the game right now is getting more CPU demanding, so it's kind of uh, wrecking a little bit of, um, uh, a little bit of the demonstration I'm trying to make here, but kicking on DLSS performance uh, should slightly lower things again. Okay, again, hard to show in the live multiplayer environment, but the point is that running DLSS and FSR generally has a little bit of a CPU frame time cost uh, in my testing, meaning that uh, if you're already CPU limited, kicking on upscaling not only doesn't help your performance because it's relieving the burden on the GPU, but can add a little bit of a CPU burden. Um, which, uh, again, just uh, doesn't help your situation. So it's at least worth noting. But anyway, that was just a little bit of a side point in this video. So the main point of this video is to make sure that people understand that your CPU can reach a certain frame rate in a game that is largely, in most games, independent of what the resolution the, the game is rendering at. The resolution the game is rendering at is primarily impacting the GPU, not the CPU. The CPU is just capable of a certain frame rate. Adjusting the resolution changes the frame rate that the GPU is able to reach, and if the GPU is slower than the CPU, then that's where your game's at, and your usage on the CPU will be lower, but just because the, the CPU is waiting around. If you, uh, if you get uh, to a higher frame rate on the GPU, uh, th then you'll eventually just reach your CPU limit, and that's as high as it can go. So you're just stuck there unless there's some graphic settings in the game that actually primarily impact the CPU and you adjust those. Or you overclock your CPU or adjust your RAM timings or get a faster CPU. That's pretty much it. And again, if you're using a higher resolution display but you're using upscaling, DLSS, FSR, XESS, that is effectively lowering the burden on the GPU, you're increasing frame rates and you can hit that CPU limit. So again, it is not really the case that the higher the native resolution, the less the CPU works. The higher the, or lower the resolution ha is largely independent of what the CPU is doing. The only thing that that's changing is the workload on the GPU, and the only thing that you can do is if you raise the resolution high enough, you become GPU limited, which is fine. I'll probably end with that too. It's like, some people seem to also think it's bad if either the CPU or the GPU is, is the limiting factor. And it's, it's, we're just identifying what the case is. It's useful to know which one is the limiting factor for a couple of reasons. One is, if you know that you're CPU limited, you know that you could run at maybe a higher resolution if your monitor's capable of it and still achieve the same frame rate. But raising the resolution will never increase the frame rate on the CPU, just to be clear. Uh, also, if you know that you're CPU limited, uh, you might know that there's very few graphic settings that are gonna help you. So you might be able to run a lot of things at higher graphic settings and still achieve the same frame rate. Uh, if you know that you're CPU limited, you'll know which part to upgrade if you want better performance in that game. And then if you know that you're GPU limited, you know that uh, you know turning down resolution, using DLSS, et cetera, is actually useful. Anyway, um, so, so it's useful to know which one's the limiting factor, but we're also not necessarily blaming one or the other. And also, this can vary a ton game by game. Battlefield 6 is pretty light on the GPU. It's pretty well optimized on the GPU side and runs pretty well, pretty fast on a lot of hardware. Um, on the CPU side of things, I would argue it's actually still pretty well optimized in that it utilizes the CPU well, but the kinds of things that are happening in the game are just very CPU dependent. Having a large player count, like 64 players, with physics going on in the environment, uh, with, with destruction and explosions, etc., this is all the kind of stuff that, uh, that makes the CPU have to work pretty hard. And, um, and so it makes sense that in a game like this, you might be more likely to become CPU limited than in other games. So just be aware of that. So if you're planning a build for a game like Battlefield, it's useful to know that pairing a higher end CPU than you would usually see listed as recommended um, uh, with, with a certain GPU might actually make sense. So if you're targeting a PC build for a certain game, it is useful to know if that game is particularly heavy on the CPU or the GPU. If you're planning a build around Battlefield 6, it's not a bad idea to overkill the CPU side of things um, uh, in order to maximize your performance compared to just doing a generally recommended PC build. Hopefully you guys found this video somewhat useful and or interesting. I know many of you did already know most of this, uh, but apparently based on a lot of comments, 
Not everybody did, so it's sometimes useful to have a helpful reminder. And remember, if you're gaming at 4K resolution, but you're using DLSS performance, it's not, I, I'm not saying that's a bad thing to do, just be, be aware, you're relieving the burden on the GPU, and you could then become uh, CPU limited fairly easily in a lot of uh, you know multiplayer titles like this. All right, um, I let my team down here. I better stop, stop uh, recording videos in Spawn and maybe actually play the game. Uh, <laughs> I hope you guys all have a good day.